Hi, welcome to Gemstone Tarot. This is your weekend tarot reading for the 14th and the 15th of April 2018. Valley Bobs joins us. She is reclining after having a fight with her mum over the cat tree where her mum bit her backside. <laughs> Not very hard, and in fact, you know, in Leia's defence, they do do that to each other now and again, kind of tear pieces out of each other. So yes, Valentine is having a bit of R&R. &R. <laughs> Aren't you, sweetheart? You go in the bed. Whoa. <sighs> right. Also, newsflash, I have a photo of Fluffy Cat. Many people have been asking, can we see a photo of Fluffy Cat? Fluffy Cat turned up at the front of the house and tried to get in and I did get a little photo. I have a soft spot for Fluffy Cat even though Fluffy Cat does, if you do let Fluffy Cat in the house, pee all over the house and generally kind of terrorise the cats. I still, I have a soft spot for difficult, difficult animals. So yeah, but I have a photo, I'm going to put that on the community page, okay? Ooh, ooh, ooh. So have a look. I would put a link up for it, but I don't know how to. So I am using Smells Like the 70s, Morgan Greer. And this is your weekend tarot reading for all signs. A little bit of hay fever already. A little bit of spring happening. And a little bit of new moon in Aries on the 16th happening. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> now, new moon in Aries on the 16th, depending on whereabouts you are. I just watched a video by a tarot reader called Zoul Energy, Z-O-U-L Energy. And normally she does where you just see the hands. And for she's in Aries. And for the new moon in Aries video, which is very good that she's done, she did her face for the first time on the camera and explained that she was quite kind of reticent about doing it, really, really nervous, but she was going to do that anyway. And that is the energy of the new moon in Aries. It is taking things that we're frightened of, shadow things, whatever it is, and bringing them out and just trying them anyway, okay? And funnily enough, look what we get for the first card. The devil. Now, to me, the devil has been coming up quite a lot recently in um, private readings and in normal readings. And with this, I like this particular rendition of it, the Morgan Greer. It's one of my favourites. It's the fly trapped in the inverted hexagram that kind of does it for me. It is our shadow side and the new moon in Aries is bravery in bringing it out into the light. That's what I get. I've had a few conversations, had a conversation with someone last night at my tennis club and they were talking to me about exactly this very thing, about believing in yourself. Now, believing in yourself is quite a sort of Disneyfied concept, isn't it? Believing in yourself is a dirty business. It's not glamorous, it's not easy sometimes, and it's not necessarily about climbing Everest. It could be about showing your face on camera. It could be about, if you're agoraphobic, stepping to halfway to the local shop. It could be making that phone call you don't wanna make. It doesn't matter. For each person, you have your own zone of fear, and it's just, breaking out of that bubble. That's what this new moon and Aries energy for me is like. Let's have a look. Ooh. That's nice. So over the weekend, and my weekend readings are quite fluid. That's my fluid dance. Weekend readings are quite fluid because they always feel that way. I don't know why, I really look forward to them. But they are for whenever you need to hear them. And I feel like this is quite new moon and airy type weekend reading. That's really nice energy. We hardly ever get that card. The sun. Clarity and also support, I think, from the universe. Warmth and 
nourishment and encouragement. I feel like even the smallest step towards bringing this into the light will be met with warmth, affection, encouragement from other people, encouragement from the universe to just take the next little step in whatever it is. For some people, it's overcoming anxieties, confidence issues. Aries is, you know, it's the first sign in the zodiac. It's kind of spring in the northern hemisphere. It's The Aries people I know are brave, not in a kind of necessarily needing to overcome something to be brave. I think they just naturally do. You know, Aries, the mantra is I am, isn't it? I am. <laughs> and I feel there's some of that little sprinkle of that for everyone. In Rather than I feel or I fear or I don't know. Remind ourselves that Mercury is still coming to the end of retrograde. So the camera just shut off then in the middle of me saying I am. Okay, I am. Valley Bobs is having a little wash there, just settling down after her misadventures. Now, we have the sun. Okay, that's the kind of warmth and almost... It almost reminds me of dreading going into a room at a party or just dreading going into a room and then opening the door and finding out it feels lovely and familiar and everyone kind of is ready to greet you. It's that kind of energy. I like it. Then we also have the Queen of Cups. And the thing I always get about the Queen of Cups is about the cup, the level of the cup, the surface of the cup. It's Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. It's more in the realms of scrying. It's more in the realms of reading reflections and reading our own reflection. And this is about some kind of giving ourselves feedback. So when you do take steps out of your little zone of anxiety, whatever it is, make sure you do give yourself some feedback. And it doesn't have to be like you're your own sport coach, you know. <laughs> yes! Or well, it can be, you know, you can do that if that's what it is for you. But more of the kind of quick body check. How do I feel? You know, maybe I still feel anxious. That's okay as well. Maybe there's some residual wobble. Maybe this, maybe that, doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be particularly tangible. It's about reading it. It's about reading your breath. It's about reading your reflection. A bit like a kind of a liquid mirror is what I'm getting. This is quite an esoteric reading today, isn't it? And alongside that, I'm getting the Empress. Looky here, people, there's a new moon at her feet. And for the Empress, I'm getting that kind of, the feeling that sometimes things take time, gestation, nine months with the Empress uh, for, for creating a child or an idea or a story or whatever it is. But it's a kind of feminine timeline rather than a measuring as T.S. Eliot would say, measuring your life in coffee spoons, okay? What a line. Imagine coming up with that. Now, when T.S. Eliot came up with that, he was in this kind of energy, okay? He must have been. It's an esoteric poem, uh, Love Song of Alfred J. Prufrock. I think it's that one anyway. Hope so, people. You know I get it wrong a lot. This is a kind of esoteric energy. The Empress, the Queen of Cups used to combat something which impacts your life in quite a real way. Now alongside that I get the star in reverse and the ace of pentacles in reverse and this is just a reminder two things one the star in reverse this is about losing your mojo. Some of us in the last few months because actually I think in general, the last few months have been quite challenging to the psyche. Some of us have lost our mojo. Some of us have just lost our bottle, as they say, lost our nerve. Lost the feeling that we can manifest as well. The star is a manifesting card. And that's okay because we're doing the feedback, the reflective feedback. And reflective feedback in this kind of esoteric way 
is what self-love is all about. It's not about looking in the tangible world and saying, well, I haven't got that and I haven't done that and I'm not at this particular time spot. Reflective feedback is, that was scary, but it felt okay for five minutes. That is good, okay? And the Ace of Pentacles is just to remind us that it still isn't time to be signing off on um, solid financial... what I call meat and potatoes type contracts that will be stretching out. An ace for me is normally about a year, stretching out into the future. Still don't feel it's time to be doing that. This is more inner work. That time will come when Mercury, you know, has had its shadow period and you're at the, more at the end of April. Wow, look at that card. Chuck Spezzano's Enlightenment cards. Oh, I love that. Remember we were talking just now about agoraphobia, about leaving the house, about leaving your comfort zone. There's somebody in an armchair and somebody offers them the key. Freedom, the gift card. That's what it's all about, people. I like that a lot. I want one of these. No, I want one of those. We want one of these, don't we, Valentine? Yes. Don't forget to look at the picture of Fluffy Cat. <laughs> it was hard to get. This Fluffy Cat moves. I'm there trying to get the picture. Yes. We get exchanging gifts. For this, I get the notion of exchanging gifts with the universe. Freedom card is the same. If you have the bravery, and it is bravery, to stick your neck out even a millimetre towards coming out of your comfort zone, the universe will reward you with freedom. The sun card. Exchanging gifts. Something will be unlocked. Do not measure it in coffee spoons, T.S. Eliot. Measure it in breath, okay? And guess what card we get? miracles and this this itty bitty baby steps busting your comfort zone in little little bits that is the stuff of miracles nice reading people do subscribe if you haven't already and if you want a private reading you can book in the description box below check out the community tab with a picture of fluffy cat namaste